All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of Buffalo Happy Hour. What's up, Mike? Derek, I am going to have to feed off of your energy. Uh, not because of the Rona, but <laughs> slightly tired. So I have to get it back in the groove. I'm stoked that we're recording today, though. Why are you more tired now, though? Because you're not even going to the gym in the morning. All gyms are closed. It. I honestly think it's because of the fact that I'm not going to the gym. Oh, you're more tired now? Yeah, because I'm not going to the gym. So my routine is semi-thrown off, but yeah, I'm not getting the juices flowing early on. I basically just wake up and immediately my phone goes off because we're trying to solve this epidemic. So So what are you doing now? Name it. Name it, dude. I'm going, going everything? I'm going through filters. I'm going through equipment that has UV bulbs built into it. We're going through uh, clips that keep filters inside of the frames that they fall into. I Dude, it's ridiculous. So it's just every single day. There's some new project going on. There's existing orders. It's just like, what is going on? So. But your job's essential, right? Oh, we got the oh, letter yeah. stating it. Yep. So I got the paperwork <laughs> today, printed it out. It's in my truck at all times. So now you can come over here and film. Yeah. Which is the biggest thing. Yeah, obviously podcast is life. Yeah. But yeah, I basically have to ensure that I'm not going to get pulled over and ask questions and um, all that craziness because there's a rumor that local authorities are going to pull people over to limit the amount of people on the road. So we'll see. Does it seem like everyone you know knows somebody that has some sort of insider scoop that martial law is going into effect like tomorrow? So I feel like I've heard this 47 times from a thousand different people. It's just like, yo, martial law is going in tomorrow. Go get your stuff. And I mean, at first I was like, oh shit, that's pretty crazy. But now I'm like, well, prove it. The the thing is, yeah, dude, it's a joke. It's all rumor mill. This is what it's like when you're in, when you're in the army, there's what's called a private news network. And it's basically all the lower enlisted come up with all these rumors of things that they heard <laughs> about what's going to happen. And then they just spew this rumor mill. And then leadership comes down and says, what are you even talking about? So for the martial law, they show the same clip from seven years ago of tanks on a train rolling into town. That's so literally that is so blown out of proportion. <laughs> Those tanks were going to a JRTC slash NTC rotation where a unit had to ship its equipment down to the training site. So it's either in California or it's in Louisiana. Uh, For the Army, it's in Fort Polk, right? So the unit, so that they can deploy, goes down to a training site and they conduct a three-week, two-and-a-half-week operation in Louisiana at Fort Polk and they test their combat effectiveness and unit readiness in lieu of deploying. So... That clip has been thrown all over the internet for all the conspiracy theorists to say that this is now martial law. So that clip is not real. Well, it's real, but not right now. Correct. It was seven years ago. Perfect. And everyone's freaking out now thinking that it's going to go into place. This happens all the time. All the time there's something going on. Everyone's like, oh, the army's here. They're just going to start knocking on doors and kicking people out. It's like, what are you talking about? (laughs) We're knocking on doors to give you food. Right. Like, it's the whole mission is to set up testing facilities, negative rooms, so that the coronavirus doesn't Mm -hmm. spread and it's contained. They are setting up testing sites. They're handing out food and water. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's crazy. People were in a time where everybody just wants to panic. Not wants to. Like, they're not choosing to panic, but they have. They feel like they have no other option but to panic. Right. So you have people that are working from home now. Yeah. You have people that are not in the right state of mind because they're ultimately going towards the negative aspects of this. And to be fair, it's all... It, mostly negative i mean this isn't a positive thing that's happening right but to spin it to where you have more of a positive mindset will do a lot of people good so that's kind of what i want to talk about today is one how you work from home and two how you mike kelly are maintaining a positive mind through all of this because there's a lot of stuff going on bro a lot of stuff we don't want to get a little bit too negative nancy 
So right. we're going to take a different approach because a lot of people don't talk about this stuff, you know. There's Absolutely. a lot of conversations that aren't focused on the positives. So we're, that's what we're going to do. I like it. Michael, first, we got to talk about some sort of stuff. Okay. You alluded to it last week. What in the world did you do to your couch? <laughs> this is breaking news, apparently. <laughs> Mike took a sawzall to the couch. On Sunday, I was relaxing in the morning, and Colleen woke up after I did, per usual on Sundays. It's also her day off. She likes to sleep. So she comes into the living room as I'm watching my show. And there's half couch in there. And... <laughs> Asks if we can continue watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine because a new episode is on Hulu on Friday. Oh, yeah. So I said, sure, and went to grab the Apple TV remote, to which it then fell into the black hole of death, in between the couch cushion and the arm of the couch. So from there, it weaseled its way deeper into the couch and fell into a nook that you can't get into. So it weaseled its way into the inner section of the arm of the couch that no human hand can fit between the springs of the cushion and then to get inside and in between the couch to grab the Apple TV remote. So I literally flipped the couch on its axis, shook it, found out where it was, and then lifted the couch and looked at it and realized... This thing is encased by plywood. So I have to like, I have to cut a hole. So I took a Dremel to it and the Dremel wasn't working. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm over it. And I'm at this point sweating, wanting to commit arson on my own home. (laughs) And I'm just staring at her and she felt bad because she goes, all I had to do was just not watch 99 or recommend it. But everyone wants to watch 99 truth then she says well we can just get a new one shipped i can get a free apple tv remote with my credit card points but it's literally right inside your couch and you know it's there it'll bother you if you spend money on a different one so i went downstairs replaced my dremel with a sawzall (laughs) and cut a hole in my couch and i then shook the couch to get the remote closer to the hole that i just created and then colleen on her hands and knees reached underneath and grabbed it with her little baby hands and pulled it free and then gave me a hug and we celebrated because i didn't swear break anything wow pull a kyle and punch a hole in my drywall so i was mature about it but i was pretty pissed the shop vac was out to collect all the sawdust dude it was an absolute nightmare so where did you cut the hole so when you flip the couch upside down you got to cut the fabric out of the way and then it exposes all the wood and the central infrastructure of the furniture. So I'm looking at this thing and it's literally just two pieces of plywood that meet and join in this perfect harmony. And I just decided to just man it and cut my own hole into a huge section of it. Did you get depressed knowing that you spent all this money on a little bit of plywood and some fabric? Or are you just finding out that realization now? The couch is under warranty, so I don't care. Well, not anymore, it's not. I mean, it says that it's covered and under any scratch, cut, tear, so I'm just going to say some termites got to it or something. Cra- no, I'm just and kidding. It created I don't a perfect know. hole. Because <laughs> By all means, it's not perfect. It started with a Dremel, and then it went from a Dremel to a Sawzall, so it's just... Dude, it's cut the f- up, but whatever. Oh I got my remote. That, okay, to be fair, wasn't sure how this conversation was going to go today. No idea. <laughs> it was a good story. Dude, All I had a Dremel in one nothing. hand and a shop vac hose in the other hand, and I'm literally sawing at my couch... Sucking up all the dust because I'm a clean freak and I can't have all that craziness going around. Sam's in his glory because of these wow. little pieces of wood are on the carpet. So he's just munchy munching, staring mm. at me. I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. Colleen's on the other couch just staring at me. It's fine. Everything's fine. So now, how are you going to handle the remote differently so that doesn't happen again? I duct taped. Oh, okay. There you go. The uh, underneath the seat cushion. where What the seat cushion actually like. Actually, like 
rests on, you know, the, the actual couch. Mm-hmm. I duct tape that and the arm. So I covered that whole slit. So oh, now, okay. even if it falls into the crevice, it doesn't fall into the, the interwebs of the couch. The abyss. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that you had a successful week. I'm glad I had power tools. Yeah. Did you do anything else this week besides that? Like, what are you what are you doing right now that you can't, like, leave the house other than work? Well, Colleen's birthday was Sunday. So we had to celebrate that. So I literally cooked all day. Um, I made a cake the night before. And then I made a hootenanny, which is a riot. Mm-hmm. And then after I made the hootenanny, I made her... Just enjoy saying it. Yeah. I made her a charcuterie board. And then after that, I made her a HelloFresh dinner meal. Ooh. So that was exciting. And then... Had Have some you drinks. done this HelloFresh before? Like, in my life? Yeah. No. So this is your first time doing them? Yeah. What do you think of them? We don't mind it, but for us... Since we meal prep anyways, it's not cost effective for us to continue doing it every week. It's a lot every week. So we said, screw that. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. And then to switch it up and kind of enjoy something else, we'll randomly throw this in like once a month or once every other month. They give you everything that you need to make the dinner though, right? Even like the spices are wrapped separately. Yeah. It's a cool idea. It's amazing. It's a lot of reading from a recipe standpoint, all the instructions and stuff, but it's it's all pretty similar. Mm-hmm. It's nothing crazy. So I did it without blowing up my house. But what I did do is I started watching Gordon Ramsay videos on YouTube because now I have a ton of time and he's got a ton of content out and it actually helped. He's amazing. Obviously he's amazing as Gordon Ramsay, but his instructional videos, even how to like cook a steak, he's just like, dude, you kill the game right now. Yeah. You're making everything so much better. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've, I've watched a lot of his videos too and just learned so much. It's interesting because most people think if you want anything to taste better, just add more butter. It works a lot of the time, though. It does. <laughs> but you also realize you can do the same thing with extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, just throw true. in more olive oil. Mm-hmm. Dude, I love olive oil. It's so good. Okay. So good. Especially like bread dip. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So before we get into the actual discussion of today, what are your initial thoughts? Because you are not a scotch guy. With traditional scotch, I'm not a scotch guy. I, I'm not a huge, I want to drink a campfire. Um, so this is actually really good. But it's, I'm, I'm telling you, man, Glenn Levitt mm-hmm. is just incredible. And that's probably my favorite. This is up there, though. Yeah. This is drinkable. Yeah, this is good. So with traditional scotch, how they do it is they basically take their barley... And in order to dry it out, they burn peat moss. And peat moss, that process there, is what gives you that very, like, mossy and campfire-type smell to it. What, what are you giving me that face for now? Because that's what you do when you drink it. Oh. Yep. oh, I thought you were saying that because of this. No. But this one, so it's pronounced Akintoshin, or Akintoshin, or whatever, however you want to pronounce it. They do not use peat moss, from, to the best of my knowledge. So this is not going to give you that campfirey, uh, peaty, mossy taste to it. It's just going to give you more of like a, a fruity, floral, and a like a bread, wheat type taste. Are you? Do you feel like you're getting that? Yeah, there's a lot of caramel undertones, mm-hmm. which I'm surprised about. Well, this is also aged for 12 years, so it's been in the barrel for a while, which is probably why. Like what? 12 years? Probably at least. Oh, okay. <laughs> you do know that it's at least 12 years, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you're being smart with me. No, no, so no. So we'll uh, get to our cocktails and the whiskey review later on. But this is this is a very good scotch. My my buddy Steve got it for me. And this is just, it's such an easy sipper, but I don't want to destroy it because it's so good. Yeah. That I could easily drink this whole bottle, but I just want to save it for occasions, you know? Like, like this, this podcast. That's, that's what I'm saying, bro. Nailed it. So let's touch on a few things about them. Um, Okentoshin, Akentoshin, there's multiple different ways. Your accent's probably going to come out, but it is a single malt whiskey scotch. It means corner of the field in Gaelic, and it is triple distilled, which is a big deal. They're one of two uh, distilleries that 
triple distill. The other is Hazelburn, and they opened in 1823. A couple quick facts about them. So, been around for a little bit. Mm-hmm. They took a short hi- hiatus because of World War II. There was a couple bomb runs that destroyed their warehouse and barrel house and uh, caused some issues logistically, but they bounced back, and yeah. here we are. And this is in the lowland section of Scotland, too. So, you're going to find very different flavor profiles and whiskey profiles as you go through the different areas of Scotland. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so like they have the lowlands, the highlands, Isle, um, the actual islands itself, um, everything. So you're going to find very different flavor profiles from this to a highland or a, yeah, a highland to an Isle whiskey quite a bit. Traditionally, when you think of scotch, you think of the Isle stuff like Lagavulin, and Brooklatic, uh, Stuff like that, Ardbeg. So that's the very, very, very high peaty stuff that you're not a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. But this stuff that's low land, or, or you also have Speyside, which is, I believe, where uh, Glen Livet's from. You have these different areas of Scotland that are more dialed back and focused on the floral and fruity notes Fruit, rather than right. the the peat and like the it'll put hair on your chest type stuff. Mm-hmm. So th- this is very, very good. We'll have Glen Livet on for a different episode. Yeah, I'm stoked. I got a bottle of that at my house. 15, uh, right? 15, a lot of apple undertone in that, but I'm not opening that until my wedding. Oh, you didn't even open it yet? No. Oh, nice. I'm saving that bottle for my wedding. There you go. Yeah. Coming up soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, that's true. We'll see. So, if you are a fortunate enough person to be able to retain your job through all this, because... Being honest, there's a lot of companies that are laying people off. There's a lot of companies that are giving people mandatory, like, I'm going to lay you off, but we'll hire you back. But there's also a lot of companies that are saying, we're going to lay you off, but we don't know if we'll hire you back. Right. So for the people that are fortunate enough to work from home, what are some tips that you have to be able to effectively work from home? And I know that you don't work from home very often, but like, limiting distractions in your house what are some key points that you can think of of how you would limit some distractions in your house have a separate room or area dedicated to work um i really the only time i work from home is on like weekends or if it's like an extra hour or two at the end of the day like real late into the evening um but for the most part like i'm either in the office or on the road working so i really don't have the luxury of the the status quo of what people think is working from home. Mm-hmm. But the tough part from for working from home is it feels like it's homework. It feels like you're back in school. So you're in your house and you're trying to focus on something that you don't care about anymore. I mean, you're in your home. <laughs> right. So having a designated area for it, like if you can set up a desk, computers, it's away from everything, um, that definitely helps. A lot of people like having a view because they don't have a view from their actual workspace at work. But at the same time, that's a major distraction. So if you can limit that and just put yourself in a corner like you're in timeout so you can focus, then for sure. Um, The other tip that I have is playing playing classical music so that you stay focused and you're not hearing every single nook and cranny like this chair that I'm sitting on. Um, because anytime that you can just stay focused and dialed in will help you. Do you find listening to podcasts is effective for you or no? No. No. Um, for me that it's like, it's too distracting. Like if I'm trying to type an email and I'm in the middle of the draft, right. And then I hear a podcast or a song that I know the words to, it takes up too much of my brain power cause I'm dumb as it is. And then I'll literally <laughs> start to type the lyrics of the song instead of the actual email body. So I just need like the sounds of nature or ocean crashing or like what, like 10 hours of that crap on YouTube. Like just something that it's just ambient noise. Not something that I'm actually into. I can't listen to my favorite band. I can't listen to a podcast. I can't listen to radio.com app with WGR. Like really? Yeah. Cause it's too distracting for me, but again, I'm an idiot. So I need, (laughs) I need total isolation so I can (laughs) add correctly. You're not an idiot. It's just different for everybody. (laughs) I can listen to podcasts. I literally listen to podcasts all day. Yeah. From the moment that I start work, basically, until the moment that I leave work. If I'm not in meetings, I'm listening to podcasts. Is that why we have 15 views on our videos? Correct. 
it's all me. Uh, <laughs> but if you are, to me, it's more of a distraction, like a planned distraction for me. If, like I will be doing work, and then when I have to take a step back from work, I enjoy continuously gathering even more information and making myself smarter in those four seconds, 10 seconds, or even a minute that I'm not physically working. That's just something that helps me continue to be productive because then I don't get that letdown of, oh, I'm not doing anything. Now I don't even want to go back to doing something. So that's not something for me. Another thing that I would like to point out though and I made a Facebook status the other day around tips from working from home, which is what sparked this conversation because a lot of people are being forced to work from home right now who never have and they're struggling. So some of the tips that I pointed out are honestly just waking up and showering, starting your day off like you normally would to go to work will change your perspective 100% because now you are in this situation where you're showering, you're all ready for the day and you already started your day so why not continue it and it'll put you in a better mood kind of like going to the gym in the morning if you go to the gym in the morning before you go to work it'll change your view on the rest of the day because you're like okay i already went to the gym in order to keep this up i'm not going to eat pizza for lunch i'm going to keep something healthy for lunch similar thought process behind that do you feel do you do that where you wake up and shower on the weekends or is do you not do that no oh it's a weekend. But like I, I crush it during the week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like feel, I'm not I don't I don't work from home. Like yeah. yeah. Do you feel motivated before you shower? Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't have that awkward lag of getting up and waking up. Like it's all in one. Yeah. Like when my alarm goes off and my eyes open, I'm awake. Like I'm already functioning. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have a cup of coffee. I don't need an hour of no talking. It's I'm here. Like, if you want to have a conversation, I can have an entire conversation with you as soon as I open my eyes. Yeah, most Jesus. people are like, there's something seriously wrong with yeah. you. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. Another thing is get dressed. Putting yourself in a situation where you're dressed to, not necessarily how you would if you were to go to work, but if you get up, you don't shower, you sit in your pajamas on the couch, how productive are you going to be? Right. I think a lot of it's mindset. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. So, getting up getting in the shower, and even putting on like a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. It doesn't have to be a suit and tie and working from home or anything. But if you get up, you shower, and you get dressed, it just puts you in that mindset of, okay, I'm up, I'm going to do work, and I'm going to continue to do work throughout the whole day. Another big thing, don't play with your pets. This is probably a very hard one for people to do. If you're working from home, your pets are on a very consistent schedule. They've been trained to do this. Every day, they know that you go to work at 7 in the morning or whatever, and you come home at 4. They don't need to go out in between those, no matter how much they bother you. They've been trained to do this. So put yourself in a room where you can maybe separate your pets off to limit them from coming into your room and distracting you. Because they're fine without you. I know. It's hard. All I want to do is pet Cleo and hang out with her while I'm working. But she can do this without me. She's fine. She can be in her own little room and I can be in my own little room. And we can both be productive together. True. Good point. But they're so freaking cute. Mm -hmm. They are so freaking cute. Finally, one of my last ones. Work from your desk, not a couch. I I touched on that, but if you are sitting on the couch, you're not going to be motivated. No. Even if you don't have a desk, just go sit at your dining room table. Get into a position where, one, you're not going to have an extreme backache. Because if you lay on your couch, you're going to be dying after an eight-hour shift. Two, you'll be more apt to get up and walk around for 10 seconds. You're supposed to get up and walk around for 10 seconds anyway, just to get the juices flowing, get your back fixed, get everything good. You'll do that more if you're sitting in a chair. Two, I might have already said two, I don't know. But you won't be tempted to put on the TV. TV would be a huge distraction, and there goes all your productivity. So if you just get up, you go sit somewhere other than your couch, you're going to be so much more productive for the rest of the day than if you were on your couch. Finally, use this time to eat from home. Don't go to your favorite pizza place right around the corner. Believe me, I want to, and I have done it every once in a while, but use this time to eat from home because you're not going to be peer pressured into anything when you're working from home by yourself. 
those are just some tips that I have. I've been doing this for a year now. 60% of the time, it works every time. No, I, I do work from home 60% of the time, though. And those are just some habits that I've picked up since starting working from home that have helped me immensely because my focus is primarily on my work rather than everything else. Oh, sorry, one more. Clean your house on the weekends. What is an easy way to get distracted? You look over and you're like, oh, I got to pick that up. Oh, I got to pick that up. That's filthy. I got to clean that. If your house is clean before your work week even starts, you don't have any distractions. That's a good tip. I like that. Yeah, because you're a clean freak. You know how it is. Dude, I have trouble falling asleep knowing I have dirty dishes in the sink. So imagine trying to sit down for work and everything being a mess. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want to do anything because you want to spend that time to clean up. When in the world do you get eight hours of free time at home to clean up? Never. (laughs) So if you're working from home and you're like, oh, I don't need to work, I'll clean up today. It'll be so tempting. So clean the night before or clean the weekend before and you won't be tempted going forward. I like that. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. So with all this going on and with everybody working from home and everybody deep in their thoughts because everything's martial laws coming tomorrow from my brother's sister that told me that. How are you staying positive in all this? I break my day down um, and go meal to meal and then task to task. Like I'm not overthinking. I'm not looking big picture. I'm literally doing what I have to do and moving on once it's complete. Like I'm not wasting energy, spending time, doing excess stuff that I don't have to because there's no point. Um, That's something I learned when I was going through everything with like the service. So I wrote down some stuff. So I take everything a day at a time and I'm grateful for what I have, right? So these two points are pretty essential. Taking it a day at a time so you're not thinking like tomorrow's only Tuesday, tomorrow's only Wednesday because that's just going to change your whole mindset. The The thing that I think about is, all right, today's Monday and I have breakfast. Once breakfast is over with, we'll do everything we have to do. Here's the five tasks. Once those are done, we'll eat lunch. And then once the next five tasks are complete, we eat dinner and then we wrap stuff up and then go to sleep. And that's how I live it. So I just go... Step by step. I don't think about the middle of the week, the end of the week, nothing. So that helps me a lot to stay mentally straight and focused. And then I'm grateful for what I have, right? So there are much worse places that you could be in Mm -hmm. for quarantine, for anything. So Other than your house that you stock up. Yeah, so you have everything. You have water, you have heat, you have air conditioning if it gets super hot. Most places it's not. You have a fan. You have windows that you can open, whatever, right? Like... It's climate controlled, essentially. Mm -hmm. There's food. There's different things that you can drink. There's not just super hot boiling water that's sitting in plastic that tastes terrible. And then you have... uh, You have a hard structure that you're in. You're not inside of a tent. You have a roof. Like, you have all these amenities. You have power. You have your phone. Like, don't take stuff for granted. Can you imagine what this would have done to our generation if we didn't have... Our phones. I think our generation would have been semi halfway decent. Sorry, but, Gen, Gen Yeah, but Gen Z, Z yeah, I think, yeah, would have yeah. just absolutely crumbled. So it, it's life, dude. I think everybody should go two weeks without any technology at a minimum. K Ron Swanson. I, I'm just I'm just saying, man. Could you it's good. It's a nice class. Yeah, you have to be able to maintain yourself without it. Yes. People don't know how to. No, not at all. And it's a riot. So other things that I do to remain positive is I remind myself that everything comes to an end. Right? So if you're smoking yourself and you're exhausted physically, just know that it's eventually going to come to an end. If somebody's smoking you, it's going to come to an end. Like everything has to stop. So it's part of life. And then sadistically, I think of ways that it could be worse. Mm -hmm. So like... It could be raining. It could be snowing. There could be wildfires everywhere. Like, I could be staring at a wall of water and a tsunami could just show up. Like, there's so many different things. I could be bit by a rattlesnake. Like, you just think of random stuff, make yourself laugh, and just come up with all these obscure things that would make your current life and position worse. Like, I could have no money. 
I could be up to my eyeballs in credit loan debt. Like, who knows? There's always more of a rock bottom than where you are. Always. There's always going to be a situation worse than you have. Yeah. I challenge anybody to let us know. That, like, there's always going to be a situation worse than you have. So my perspective on this is I treat a lot of my life like this is what is complaining and being upset going to do for me? Right. That's literally my entire philosophy on living is if something upsets me, if something makes me angry, whatever, what is going to be, what is me being mad at myself or the situation going to do to benefit me in the long run? It's only going to pose a certain amount of time that I can't get back because for some reason I'm mad at something that someone did to me. It's very, very, very cliche. But the old the saying where you have eighty six thousand four hundred dollars in your bank account and somebody takes ten of it, are you gonna really be throw away the other eighty six thousand of it just because someone took ten? No, you're not gonna do that. So why do that to your day? Mm -hmm. To me, that's such a, a point that I literally live by because I cannot stand when people dwell on things that are out of their control. It's like what. If you're quarantined in your house right now during this whole virus and you're pissed off that you're here and you're pissed off that this virus exists, you think the virus is just going to get up and walk away like, oh, shit, Jamie's pissed at me. I'm going to get up and walk away. Right. Like, that's not how this happens. Like, you're quarantined in Buffalo, New York. You're not quarantined in the Sahara Desert. Right. Everything is going to be fine. <laughs> you just literally need to take it day by day. And the other thing that gets me is... This might be like a positive or negative for people, but we have zero idea what's going to happen with this. Literally zero. The experts in the field that are doing these White House press conferences, the experts are saying they don't know what's going to happen. So why even think about it? You're stuck here. Stop thinking about the worst case because they don't know if it's going to be the worst case. It could be the best case. You're putting yourself in the situation where you're going to continuously be upset and negative with yourself for a situation that you cannot control. So why not take this time to better yourself? Instead of thinking about the negatives, think about the positives. Do some self-actualization and figure out how am I so lucky that people below me, like I feel bad for the people that don't have as much as I do. Be happy with yourself. Be happy that you put yourself in the situation where you can actually thrive. Because like you said, all of it's going to come to an end. And you're going to feel so much better coming out the other end of that tunnel if you feel much better about yourself where you are right now. It's crazy, man. I, I just don't get how people can be upset or negative in this situation. I don't either. You have days to just do nothing but watch the Fast and the Furious trilogy. Right? I'd be so happy. Like, I, I saw that meme going around. It's like, your grandparents have been called to war. You're called to sit on your couch and watch, watch something. You can handle it. It's so true. Very true. You're... <laughs> I just... I don't get it. I don't get it, Mike. But because anyway, it's always easy to be negative. That snakes herself into this next conversation. During this quarantine, have you been able to watch anything or read anything or hear anything that you feel some of our listeners might like? Yes. Uh, everything I'm about to say is hashtag not a sponsor. So their stand up specials from Theo. I cannot wait until some of these are actually sponsors. Just say. So, started off strong with Theo Vaughn's mm. stand-up. Uh, Tom Segura is about to release a stand-up. When this airs, it'll already have come out, so check out his new stand-up. When did it come out, or when is it coming out? Tuesday. Which is? Oh, the day, like... <laughs> the day after Monday. <laughs> <laughs> this, the third day of the week, or second day of the week. If you're in Europe. Yeah, uh, the 25th. Uh, it's okay. I want to hold you to this. <laughs> I was just wondering. March 24th, it airs. Okay. Anyways, Bill Burr stand up. Oh my God, I'm so excited for that. The Unabomber series on Netflix. Uh, the show's White Collar and Prison Break. The series Dirty Money on Netflix. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, obviously. Obviously. And the John Adams HBO series that's on Amazon Prime. Because. Oh, really? What else would I recommend other than one of the greatest docu-series to ever exist because there's nothing better than watching him go to the Constitutional Convention and argue. <laughs> so is it incredibly accurate? It is accurate. To the best of your knowledge? No, yeah, Obviously, it is. You don't know. They, uh, they bypass major things, like some of the 
key battles in the revolution. Um, the Battle of Shoot Farms. <laughs> the Battle of Shoot Farms. <laughs> if you like, if you're not totally spun up on what is going on, and they'll like they'll show it in the show, and you're like, oh, that's what that is, and then it's already over. Like they don't show Washington crossing the Delaware, but mm-hmm. they like you know that it's occurring. And it's on you to know, like, oh, so that's where we are in this time. Like, and the show just keeps rolling. It's such a good series, though. Like, Interesting. They had a How lot of good... How many episodes is it? Six. I think it's six episodes total. That's it. So... Cool. Yeah. For show. So, for me, I have a couple that we started watching recently and finished watching recently because we're insane when it comes to Netflix and Hulu. Uh, and then I also have a couple series that are coming up for their next season that I definitely want to highlight because that's going to engulf my entire life for the next month. So the first one is on Hulu. It's called Instant Family. It is created and starred by Mark Wahlberg. So automatically, you know, it's going to be good. And there's going to be a corrupt cop somewhere in there because that's all he does. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, kind of. So Instant Family, it's this awesome movie about how him and his wife don't get a uh, or they're not going to have a baby themselves they want to adopt and it goes through the adoption process and raising a kid that is not your own especially if the kid is older and already has a developed personality it's very very interesting and funny but it also hits home for a lot of people probably that were adopted because it's a it's definitely I can only imagine how eye-opening it could be for some people and it definitely got me teary-eyed a little bit at the end too so definitely go check that out that one's awesome i said definitely like 47 times during that but that's fine we'll just keep going the definitely next one that i'm going to talk about here is uh strangers so the stranger it is a relatively new uh series on netflix basically what this one is is a series where this girl is called the stranger she calls herself the stranger and basically she will tell tell people secrets of the other person that they love, I guess. So, like, the first example is she tells this guy a secret of his wife that he didn't know of. And it's just this completely long story of these different secrets evolving into something else because she hacked their bank account or something along those lines. So she just keeps telling people secrets that then dwindle relationships and end up going crazy. It's really, really interesting. Definitely check that one out. The next one, because you already talked about Bill Burr and Tom Segura, which I'm very excited for, but the next one that I would like to talk about is Ozark. Have you ever watched Ozark? Dude, you gotta watch Ozark. It is so good. It is about money laundering in the Ozarks of Missouri. How much better can you get than that? It's like a Breaking Bad, but for money laundering instead of, like, meth making. It's very... (laughs) I do condone meth making, <laughs> but Ozarks is very, very good. They already have two seasons out, and the second se- or the third season is coming out March. <laughs> what are you laughing? At? You just told all of our viewers that you condone <laughs> meth making, <laughs> dude. It's a, it's a good business model. Uh, I, I could see how people are drawn to it. I really could. The <laughs> you're the reason why we can't buy Sudafed. <laughs> yes, probably, but. <laughs> Ozark, their third season is coming out March 27th, I believe. So definitely go check that out because that one is going to be amazing. You win the word and, definitely uh, this I week. Know. Thank you, dude. Uh, what is my normal word? Uh, for sure. That's what it is. For sure. For yeah, sure. for sure. For sure. I remember our first interview. I said it a thousand times in like, or our third interview. Second. I don't remember which one. I think it was our second interview. Yeah, Southern Tier. It was nonstop. It, yeah. At first, it was all over the place. I was listening to it back, and I was like, oh my god. (laughs) But it could always be worse. It could always always be worse. worse. I took that as a learning experience. You and I took it as a learning experience this time. I said, dude, what we got to do is we got to stop commenting on each other's sentences. Look at us. We're doing good. I know. It's just shut your word hole and let the co-host speak his point. All right. Well, those are my suggestions. Those are your suggestions. Let us know if you are going to take our suggestions and actually go watch them because they're going to be they're, they're the best suggestions ever. So let us know what you think. 
Love it. Mike, let's get to the cocktail section. Cocktail section. Derek, drop that beef for the cocktail section. <laughs> So I, I have zero idea where that was going when I started it. And it just went somewhere. I don't even know what that was, but it just went. Came and went. Came and went. Could always be worse. It's the title of this episode. So my cocktail is the cocktail of no name. And it involves The name will be up here, just so everybody knows. It involves Akintoshin, <laughs> which is nothing more than some Akintoshin lemon juice and honey syrup. So you put that in a shaker with some ice, shake it, and then strain it into a glass. And there you go. Did you get it from the Akintoshin website? For sure. It's adorable how they put, like, how much you should be putting it in, right? Yeah. Did you get to that point? Yeah. Where they're, like, milliliters and leaders so. it was it was too much yeah i'm not going to start converting stuff well i was going to start converting stuff and then i'm like never mind yeah so we're just going to read it as it is there you go it's very interesting so my cocktail is the bucky and it's 35 drabs of scotch a bar spoon of queen cuny i don't know forgot what it is <laughs> and then 10 milliliters of lemon juice and ginger ale you top with some ginger ale look at that it looks so good. Really? Yeah. Keep an eye on our Instagram. Go follow us on Instagram because we put Cocktail Tuesday and Cocktail Thursdays up every single week. We're super good about it. We're super good about it. <laughs> <laughs> Very consistent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this will be posted soon because right now we're currently in episode 26. Yes. And on our Instagram, we're on episode, what, 15? We're pretty far behind. Yeah. We're like two and a half months behind. Yeah. We're, we're not doing good. But that's fine. I mean, you live and you learn. It can always be worse. Oh my God. <laughs> it can definitely always be worse. <laughs> oh God, Mike. I don't know what we're doing here anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, what else do you want to get to, my friend? Anything? I'm excited for this review because this is the first scotch. We got another one planned. Do you want to give the viewers kind of what we got planned? Yeah. Tell them about it. What? Why? Why me? Because. You why? already have it in your head, and then you try to delegate it, and you're yeah, just I like, do. tell them, what, tell them right, what we got. So, for the 50th episode, Mike and I are huge fans of Parks and Rec, if you couldn't already tell. Parks and Rec in the office in Brooklyn and I literally define our life. So, you guys probably already know where we're going with this, but Lagavulin 11 is Nick Offerman's special Lagavulin. So we're going to be having that on our 50th episode because it's a pretty pricey bottle. Yeah. So we wanted to save it for something, a milestone. And we decided that 50th would be our milestone that we want to open this bad boy up. And you are going to hate it. <laughs> I am so excited to watch your reaction while you sip this. Yeah, it You're is. You're not going to have it before then. You're not going to have any Lagavulin before then. You're not going to have any Ardbeg before then. Or Lafroig before then. No. You are going to have your first sip of highly peated whiskey on air. And we're going to zoom into that face mouth. Wonderful. This is going to be an experience. You're, it's going to go one or two ways. Obviously, it's the only way this can go. You're either going to hate it or you're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. But guess what? If you hate it, it can always be worse. I'm just going to give you the bottle. And you'll be in your glory, and you'll high step upstairs. Dude, I love it. Yeah, I absolutely love it. That campfire smell, that burning, that literal feeling of chest hair growing, just really gets me going. Why would you want to drink a campfire where you could just go outside and make one? Why take pictures of nature when you can go outside and stand in it? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. It's just you're being part of something that's so unique and. It, it is easily available now, but Scotch in and of itself is a completely different monster than anything that American whiskey is. Mm -hmm. Granted, they are. We will be having discussions as soon as this coronavirus quarantine like lifts its ugly head. We're going to be able to start interviewing people again. I know. So when that happens, we're going to be interviewing a distillery out near Black Button. Where they're specializing basically in solely making American scotch. 
So they want to create some sort of uh, American single malt that is going to mimic something that would be made in Scotland. They can't call it scotch, obviously, because scotch has to be made in Scotland. But they're going to be making that stuff, which is 1,000% up my alley. And I'm very excited for this. So, uh, yeah, so it, that's why I like having scotch is because it's something so different than what we can get here. Very true. What are you taking notes on over there? Oh, don't you know. I'm just getting organized, man. I got, I'm taking this pod seriously because we're trying to grow this thing for the boys. It's about time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're here when you should be home quarantined. I know. Don't arrest him. I know. He's exempt. <laughs> He's exempt. <laughs> I got my papers. Dude, it's just crazy. The last time I had papers to travel was, like, when I was traveling for the government. Now it's, I'm just traveling for the state, for the work, and you wouldn't, I don't know. I just never thought that this would be a thing in today's day and age. Do you want some more Akintoshin? No, I'm good. I have enough for the uh, the rating of it. All right. You want to get into it? Yeah, dude. We have Alkintoshin for everybody. And for the thumbnail, Alkintoshin. Oh, my God. Alkintoshin. Michael, label and branding. So, I like their bottle because their name is Raised. Underneath the label. It's a nice shaped bottle. The label of it in itself is not over the top. Gives you the information that you need. And they're, you know, fairly gentle earth tones. Mm -hmm. It gives a little bit of a history on the back. Hey, let me see the back. Okay. And the front states that it's triple distilled, which is very unique for this distillery, as Mm -hmm. you touched on earlier. And it actually gives you tasting notes, which I just saw right now, which are interesting because I do taste all this. So we'll save it for the tasting notes section. But this is, it's a very cool bottle. It's very classy and it has the raised on it. So it automatically gets the, uh, one of the higher ones, one of the higher ratings because it's raised and it's unique. It's a unique bottle. So what are you giving it? I give it an A plus check mark. A plus check mark. Nailed it. All right. Nose. In one side, you're not getting any alcohol in here. In one side, I'm getting caramel and brown sugar. In the other side, I'm getting floral notes. Yeah, I'm I'm getting floral notes, and then I'm getting a hint of fruit. What kind of fruit do you know? I, I can't, hold on. <laughs> Why would he ask me that when we're doing a whiskey review? <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Take a step back, take a step back, take a step back. Also, another thing that I really like about scotch... Most of it comes like this. Comes in a cool cardboard box. That's dope. Throw that box up to the camera. Let them see what we're working with here. This is sick. I love that Scotch does this. And and higher end whiskeys do it too. But it makes for a cool collector's item. Like I want to keep that box and display it somewhere. Because it's just so nifty and so cool. I'm 87 years old because I just used the term nifty. Alright, sorry, nose. It is nice. Caramel brown sugar, flour, fruit. Yeah, I'm getting a like little an baking a- spice. I'm getting like an apricot, like citrusy orange oh. thing. To the nose? That's the fruit that oh, I'm getting. Yeah, okay. I can see that now. Are you getting that? Yeah. So what re- I give it an A plus plus check mark. I would give it an A plus 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 check mark. You're all hot and bothered over the nose right now. I love this whiskey so much. Whiskey, no E. (laughs) True, no E. All right, initial taste. Dude, I love this so much. I literally can't get over how much I love this. You can taste in the initial taste like a buttered toast. Now, now I want it for dinner. Buttered toast? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Think buttered toast. Buttered toast. Yeah. 
It's gentle, though. It's not... It's very gentle. Yeah. It's not like a <clears throat> like a sourdough. Right. Who even has sourdough? Actually, sourdough is mad good. As Ooh, toast? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And it's like buns. Right. But anyway, it's like a regular wheat toast. Buttered. Buttered. Emphasis on the fact that it's buttered. It is so like, creamy smelling. I don't... We get it. You're obsessed. I love scotch so much. That's the only reason why I started this podcast, so we can start reviewing scotch. It's it. I love it. Are you getting that too or no? Yeah, a little bit. I definitely get the... I get the buttered toast. There's not a lot of spice. What do you want to rate it, though? God, don't ask me, because I'm going to give it the highest rating of them all. A++++ plus 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 check mark. <laughs> You, 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 I agree. you, I agree, I agree, I agree, oh. I agree, I agree, I agree, um, ending notes, you're getting a little melon, I mean, maybe that's initial, dude, it's a lingering burn, mm-hmm. it stay, it's very oily, you can tell that it's very oily, because it, it definitely, mm-hmm. like, cool, look at your, it sitting in the glass, yeah, it coats your mouth, too, it's similar to, it's just hung up there, man, yeah, what is the one that we... The new Riff one. That yeah, was the, very oily. Yeah, the new Riff is oily, you, too. You drink it, and it just coats your entire mouth, even if it doesn't touch your mouth. Mm-hmm. It, it literally looks like golden honey sitting in the glass. Yeah. This is so good. So, my ending note, I, I am getting honey. It's like the residual effects of the toasted butter up front. Mm-hmm. So, I'm getting honey on the back end. Buttered toast. Yeah. What toasted did I say? butter. Well... Yeah, butter toast. <laughs> Christ. But yes, I agree. I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. All right, so honey. Um, Maybe the butter toast is at the end. Is your butter toast and honey at the end? No, it's at the end of the initial taste. I agree with you. It's not ending now. I agree, I agree, I agree. <laughs> but I'm also getting some sort of melon, like a honeysuckle or something. We're just going to have to go to the store and just start eating random fruit. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. I'm also getting a heavily pepperoni taste to it. I think we got to have some pizza. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ending note, I'm giving it an A++ check mark. A++ check mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final rating. Dude, this is bad. This is going to be the highest one yet, just saying. I just love <laughs> All right, Derek, go ahead. 99. <laughs> But what about the one? <laughs> All right, uh, ready? Yeah, Three, yeah. two, one. Ninety-four. 97. Okay, there you go. You heard it here first, folks. Ninety-five point five. Uh, thanks for doing math. Yeah, I, I saw the gears turning, and I'm like, I'll just do it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my gears that have been spinning yeah, the rest of the out. time. Yeah, I saw smoke coming out. Like, We're good. Oh, oh, there's numbers in between. <laughs> Hold on, three. <laughs> you know. I'm Manello. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a whiskey review for Okintoshin, 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 something like that. <laughs> they do the phonetic pronunciation of it on their website, and uh, it's Okintoshin when you look it up online and you say, "How do you pronounce?" It's Okintoshin. So it's heavily German, even though it's Gaelic. Now, hold on, I got a drink. What do you do here? But then when you when you spell it out, it's literally O A K. It's O. No, it's O C K, right? No, it's O A K. Oh, are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure it's O C K. Sweetheart, I literally looked it up and wrote it down because I didn't want to sound like a schlemiel on this episode. Watch, you're gonna see it's O C K. It's O A K. No, it's O C K. Space E N. All right, we're posting this. Space Toshin, T O S H E N. Oh, you got it from different place. Yeah. Because on their website, it's literally O-C-K. It's Akintosh. Yeah, because it's heavily German, so that's the real way. But when you Google, when, you, when you're on the Oogles, it's Oak. Remember when Ask Jeeves was a thing? Where did he go? I don't know, man. There was some weird He's search probably hanging out with Tom from MySpace. Yeah, poor guy, Tom Anderson. What do you mean, poor guy? He sold for millions. But where is he now? Probably on a beach somewhere. <laughs> doing Not lines of coke. Distancing. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's probably on the beach having coconut water, just ripping lines. Dude, did you use Ask Jeeves a lot? No. I feel like nobody did, but they all went there for one search just to see what it was like. Yeah. It was weird. It was kind of like when Bing came out. Everyone's like, well, I'll try Bing. Yeah, they you, tried it, and you're like, oh, so it's just Google, so I'll just use Google. You go to Bing to search Google to go to Google. <laughs> Exactly. It's so weird, man. And that kind of goes back to our conversation last week. It's like, you can literally start anything, and if it's good enough, it'll overtake what was there. Yep. Facts. Bing is still it's around, crazy. though. It is. And who, I don't understand Who it. owns it? Probably Bing. <laughs> I have no idea. You I think mean, someone owns it, and it's not just an independent company? Correct, yeah. Like, that that search engine. I'd look it up you on my phone, Yahoo but we're right? using it. I feel like it's Yahoo, but I'm not sure. But Yahoo has its own search engine. What is it? Yahoo.com. Right? Yeah, I just... Oh, Pretty yeah, sure that's true. They Yahoo. do. They have, yeah, like, yeah. a search. Maybe it's AOL. No, AOL owns, or is owned by Yahoo now. Yeah, AOL's gone. What about AIM? What was your instant messenger screen name? I don't remember. That actually came up recently, and I couldn't remember it. I know my sister's, though, but I, I don't remember mine. What was your sister's? I'm not going to say online. Oh. No way. I got a protector. Mine was skate Z York one five two one, you know, because I was a skater. I skated Z York a lot. It's probably first initial last name and some numbers for me. Mine was carried for a long time. My name spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, that's it. Thank you for our time. Your time. Carried five uh, six two five. Thank you for the views. <laughs> Stay clean, wash your hands. Work on social distancing. Speaking of my birthday, my birthday is May 26th. This is the 26th episode. Goodbye. (laughs) Go follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on Facebook. We post a lot of content there. We were joking a little bit earlier about the cocktail section. We do try to post as consistent as possible. We're both very busy. But we do try to post consistent as possible on the Cocktail Tuesday, Cocktail Thursday. Yep. We also post every single day. So go follow us. Make sure to leave us a like and a comment on all of our posts. It definitely helps us. And a review on iTunes and Facebook as well. Those really help make us look even more professional. Go subscribe to us on YouTube. We're doing this dual camera setup. Mike, say hi. Hello. What's up? We're doing this two camera setup to enhance your viewing pleasure. So subscribe to us. A lot of content coming up because when quarantine is up, we're going to quarantine. Is don't, that don't sexual or? No, it's not sexual. It means that we're going to do a lot of interviews. Oh, yeah. We have a backlog now because we have a lot of people that say yes. And now we're just going to arrive at the doorstep and be like, remember that time you said yes? Over I, here. I feel bad. Like, I want to get out and interview these people because some of these industries that we're doing, they're still open. Yeah, for like delivery and takeout. But we, I mean, we can't. <clears throat> what are we going to do? You know? Yeah, it is tough. So as soon as this quarantine is up, we're going to start throwing this stuff out. Yep. So make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and the podcast platform so we know that you're listening, you know that you're, or we know that you're enjoying the content. Uh, give us a subscribe right here. And uh, this has been episode 26 of the Buffalo Happy Hour, Mike. Derek, I will see you next week. What are we talking about next week? Saws all to the chair. <laughs> Something that happens this week, because I'm sure something ridiculous is going to occur. And probably more COVID news, because why not? (laughs) At this point, it's literally our entire life. (laughs) But staying positive, guys. And remember, it can always be worse. (laughs) All right, we're out. (laughs) I hate you.